And uh, I want to read Isaiah 53 from verse 10. And I want to speak a bit about uh, the mystery, two or three mysteries of the cross, the mysteries of the cross. People really don't understand the heart of God behind the cross or God allowing his son to be nailed on a cross like a criminal. People don't understand. But Isaiah 53 tells us a lot. And this time, we shall dwell with some of these mysteries and we shall be praying that the church will receive a revelation of these mysteries. Let's read Isaiah 53 um, from verse 10. The Bible says, Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him, that is to crush Jesus, and to cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. He will see his offspring. That is, Jesus will see his offspring or his children. Hallelujah. And he and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. That's another point. I'll come and talk about it. And the will of the Lord will prosper in the hand of Jesus. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many. Wonderful. I also over the week deal with that, that uh, about justification by the suffering on the cross. Justification by suffering on the cross. Let me read. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will uh, justify many and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors, and made intercession for the transgressors. That's another point. But let me start by saying, we see a picture here, of our God the Father. When Jesus was crucified, when Jesus was crucified on a cross like a criminal, and many people abused him, many people abused him, and many people um, turned away from him. The people who have heard his message, the people that he has healed their people, turned away from him. And Isaiah 53 gives a wonderful picture of uh, Jesus, of Jesus, he grew up, verse 2 says, he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of the ground. He had no beauty or, no, and no, or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Verse 3 is wonderful. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hid their face. He was despised and we esteem, esteemed him not. Surely he took up all our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. Now, see, we see a, a Jesus on the cross. A Jesus who have said is the son of God and it's as if God has abandoned him and he's suffering on the cross. Men also have abandoned him. Men also have uh, turned away from him. He was called a man of sorrow. A man of sorrow. What a name should we give to this uh, precious deliverer, precious son of God. But I want you to see the other side of God. I want you to see the other side of God. That is what I've just said is the, other, is the side here on earth. But the other side of God in heaven. Let's understand the mind of God. The Bible says in verse 10, Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. So we see it was God's will to allow Jesus to be tortured, to be put on a cross, to be despised, to be classed together with the transgressors, to be classed together with the thieves and murderers. It was God's will. It was God's will. That was God's way. And it's a mystery how a righteous God should leave his righteous son, the portion of his life, to suffer 
But I want to tell you one wonderful thing is that that was the path chosen by God that me and you shall be restored back to God. It's a mystery how God chose this path. Oh, hallelujah, of the suffering of Jesus. But one of the results that I'm bringing to you is that through that suffering, we became the children of God. Through that suffering, oh, hallelujah, we are classed to be children of God. We were accepted. What a privilege this is to all of us that the suffering of Jesus took us back to be classified as the children of God. When I look at this scripture, I see a great righteous purpose of God. Now, I go back to Adam and Eve. When God created Adam and Eve, he created them not to be sons of God, but to be men of this world. But I see the suffering of Jesus, and this is a mystery that all of us, we should really focus and, and be excited and thank the Lord. Although we did not understand, although men did not understand, although it's something that looked foolish in the presence of God, but I see this one as a great grace released by God, a great favor released by God through this suffering that me and you shall not, not become only men of this world, but shall be translated, shall be elevated. Oh, hallelujah. Shall be transformed by the suffering of Jesus to be called the sons of God. The Bible says God has never called an angel a son, but me and you, we have been called a son. Oh, hallelujah. So the suffering of Jesus, in the suffering of Jesus, there was hidden a mystery of God the desire of God that me and you shall become sons. And if we are sons, oh hallelujah, then we can call our God Abba Father. That's what the Bible says. We can call God Abba Father. If the Bible says, just as a son cannot come to ask his father for a bread and he gets a stone. The same thing, a son cannot come and ask for a fish and get um, a snake. The same thing, me and you. Whatever we come to God, desiring from God, God receives us as his sons. And I want to remind you that the Bible is full of great and many um, uh, um, confirmation that we are sons of God. He calls us his sons. And if we are his sons, then we are able to receive everything oh hallelujah that we need as sons and this is one great mystery that the world need to discover the mystery hidden in the suffering of christ that released a grace in us to become sons i want to read or to show you some scriptures in the book of uh, galatians Praise the name of the Lord. Galatians chapter 3, verse 14. He says, He redeemed us in order. Chapter 3 and verse 14. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we may receive the promise of I mean, we may receive the promise of the Spirit. Look at verse 29. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Oh, hallelujah. God promised Abraham. God promised Abraham that he is going to bless him and out of him, he'll bring out a holy generation. And we see it's from the root of Abraham that Jesus is born so we see the plans of God the plans of God the plans of God in the calling of Jesus and we see the plans of God hidden in the suffering of Jesus that men at that time could not understand we have a right like the sons and the children of Ibrahim to call our God Abba father we have a right to call our God 
Abba Father, we have a right to call God our Father. And just like the Father in this world, He's able to release to us. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, explain this very well. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Today, we have the full rights of sons. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. We have a full right of sons of God. Verse 6, the Bible says, Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our heart. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. Praise the name of the Lord. My point is for us to understand the mystery in the suffering of Jesus. And one of the mystery is how God allowed us to become sons. And because of this suffering of Jesus that God allowed Jesus to go through, then we can call God Abba Father. And whatever we ask the Lord God, he shall give us. Why? few things I want to bring to you before we come to pray. Why God will give you what you desire is because he paid the price through the suffering of Jesus. He paid the price for you to become a son. You are not a son born of the flesh. You are a son born of the spirit as we, are, as we have read in Galatians chapter 4. You are a son, valuable son. And that's why God has allowed his spirit to operate in you. And you will receive whatever you ask of the father. Because you operate under the spirit of God. Every child of God who confessed Jesus Christ operates under the spirit of God. The spirit that was in Jesus. Jesus said, I cannot leave you orphans. When I go, my father will release us his spirit upon your life. And the Bible says in the book of Romans, if the spirit of God that was in Jesus, if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you, he will be able, hallelujah, to transform this body, to transform this mortal body. So the spirit of God comes in us and transforms our mortal bodies in a very special way, in a very special way, and gives us qualification to become sons. That when we call upon heaven, we are answered as sons because our God paid for, through the suffering of Jesus Christ. The other thing I want to bring forward, why God will answer our prayer. And that's why we are celebrating. It's because Jesus, is because Jesus, his only son, hallelujah, was able to conquer the devil through that pain. He was able to come down into the kingdom of the devil and take away the keys. He was able to conquer death. Jesus was able to come out victorious. Hallelujah. God will answer us because his son came out victoriously. Oh, hallelujah. He defeated the devil. And nothing we desire from our God that we cannot receive because already Jesus, the son of the living God, has already worked it out for us. He has fought out for us. He has conquered the devil for us. And that's why in heaven, there was jubilation when Jesus rose from the dead. There was jubilation. Oh, hallelujah, in heaven. When Jesus came out triumphantly, there, was, there is also jubilation, the Bible says, whenever one human being here on earth accepts Jesus as his personal savior and turns his life unto God. The Bible records there is great jubilation in heaven, not only because of that redeemed soul, but also because of the victory of Jesus, through Jesus, that that one man, has been able to come to God through the victory of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody see the value? Can somebody see the value? The world is in crisis of coronavirus. But we come to tell the world that a price has been paid and God is hearing our prayers. 
and God is answering our prayer because he has paid. He has paid for it through his son. I come confidently to let you know, God can never, God can never cast his children away. Many people have prayed. Many people have turned back to God in different ways. I'm telling the world confidently that our God, rather my God, our God will not cast you away. This problem will leave us better than it found us. It found us. It will leave us rejoicing that it, than it found us. We shall come out victorious because we are not fighting our battle. Jesus has won for us. And one of the things that he won for us is good, is good health. He conquered not only death, but he conquered the power of diseases. And in Luke chapter 9, he says, Go ye out, I've given you power and authority to heal diseases, to raise the dead. And Paul tells the diseases, I mean the death, where is your sting? We are excited of the victory of Calvary because we are fighting an enemy that is defeated. The diseases and infirmities that are brought by the infection of this virus, we want to declare to them in Jesus' name. They have nowhere to go but to go to hell in Jesus' name. They have no any other business but to live human beings. We were created by God. And after being created by God, sin brought diseases, brought suffering. But we are happy today. We are jubilant today because of the victory of the cross. Oh, hallelujah. We are so happy today because our God sent out Jesus and he paid the price of our healing. He, he paid the price. May I tell everybody that is listening to me, don't be pulled down by the suffering of coronavirus. Don't lose your mind and don't forget there is an accomplishment through the blood of Jesus. And here at Mizpah, we are praying for you. Soon I'm asking my other pastors to join us online. And just we pray for several things. And one of the things we want to do is to thank God for the victory. Few minutes and wherever you are, I ask you to be attentive. I ask you to join us. I also want you to start re uh, rejoicing. Even if you are suffering, even if you are sick right now, even if you are told you shall die tomorrow, death has no power over your life. There is a life in Christ Jesus. And if you have never given your life to Jesus, this is the best time. You should know that God has already paid for your salvation. It's the Bible says in the book of Romans, whoever shall believe in his heart and confess with his mouth shall be saved. Shall be saved from every distraction of this world in the mighty name of Jesus. We are excited here at Mizpah and we are celebrating because we know Jesus has won the battle for us. Even this of coronavirus, he has won the battle for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever you are, rejoice with me. Thank God with me. Wherever you are, thank God with me in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank God with me in the name of Jesus that today we have victory in the name of Jesus. We have victory released by God through Jesus Christ. And today we want to thank God that we can be called children of God. And whatever we ask our Father God, he shall give us. Jesus said in Matthew chapter, uh, in Matthew uh, 11, I mean, he says that God will give us whatever we ask. Oh, hallelujah. In his name. That's a heavenly commitment. That is a heavenly commitment. I repeat again. That is a heavenly commitment. Heaven has committed itself. And the Bible says that our God is not like a human being. That he may lie. I'm talking about Matthew chapter 18. And verse 18, I tell you the truth, whatever you bind here on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Verse 19, again I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, you ask for it, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I with them we believe God is together with us and we believe God 
has committed himself that whatever we shall ask in the name of Jesus, we shall receive. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord enrich you. May the Lord give you this surety in the mighty name of Jesus. And now, wherever you are, believe with me. We are more than two. We are more than two in the mighty name of Jesus. We have our pastors who are praying for you. We have our pastors who are standing in the gap for you. And we have Jesus in the right hand of God standing with us today in the name of Jesus. We declare, we declare every need of healing in the life of everybody. My God, my Father is releasing a healing in the mighty name of Jesus. My God, my Father is releasing a healing upon your life in Jesus' name. We pray for those people who are suffering in quarantine, in hospitals. Oh, today we are calling the name of the Lord Jesus for we have a surety for God has paid the price of every disease, every infirmity. Jesus has suffered on the cross so that whatever we ask of our God, he shall give unto us. We pray for those who have been told they will die tomorrow and declare in Jesus' name, death has no power over your life. It is Jesus and the name of Jesus that has power over your life. And my Jesus will hold your hand. And my Jesus will heal you in the mighty name of Jesus. And my Jesus will heal you because he has paid the price for every disease. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for many people who have lost beloved one. People who have lost the beloved one. We pray that God you shall give them comfort in Jesus' name. We pray, my Father, my, Father, my God, even for those people who are in quarantine right now, that you shall comfort them in Jesus' name. We pray for those people who have been told they have been infected by this coronavirus. We declare in Jesus' name. The name of Jesus has power. The name of Jesus has power even to heal. The name of Jesus has power to cleanse every infirmity. And today in Jesus' name we pray because of the suffering of Jesus. God, you have committed yourself to heal your people. And we pray that you heal your people in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus.